Hey everyone, this is Don Stevens. I'm talking about digital marketing for small businesses. I uh, hope you enjoyed this recording. Uh, this will give you some tips and explain it a little bit more about uh, digital marketing if you, in case you had any uh, questions about it. So what is digital marketing? First, let's start with what is regular marketing. Marketing has always been about helping businesses achieve their goals. Whether it's financial or recognition, but it's also been about survival. And digital marketing is no different. I mean, we think about the Starbucks and McDonald's and uh, all the major franchises in the world, and they still use marketing, effective marketing, uh, for their branding. Uh, so if big companies like this used it, why not smaller businesses? Uh, they need to be active, they need to be in the forefront, um, and they need recognition for who they are. Yeah, you know, this is what America was built with, uh, small businesses. Uh, so, you know, use marketing. Uh, don't be afraid of it. So this intro is about where are you now? What are your goals? What are your challenges? Uh, for your business, and what type of businesses do you have, and whether or not you need digital marketing. And of course, the answer to that question is all businesses need digital marketing. You have entrepreneurs, services, uh, retail, business to business, even affiliates, nonprofits, storefronts, and digital. I mean, I met insurance agents, realtors, dentists, um, you know, auto mechanics need digital marketing to stand out for a crowd, even if it's a local digital marketing. So this is an interesting quote I uh, came up, uh, I found and discovered it's at the time I took you to read a sentence, 20 million emails have been sent. It's just kind of a reminder that everything has gone digital. So your business needs to go digital as well to survive. So this is part one uh branding and logo so we're going to talk a little bit about your branding and logo again these are just tips that i uh have come across you know the main thing is to be creative and choose custom theme and ideas um, and make sure that logo represents your business this is uh you know offer colors don't make it too cliche and I have here double entendre, and in case you don't understand what that means, this will tell you exactly what it means. So, for, for instance, here's the Bronx Zoo, which is a wonderful logo that they have here. Everybody sees giraffes, but do you actually see the New York skyline uh, on the legs of the giraffe? That's an incredible uh, logo there. FedEx, we've seen this a million times. Uh, if you look at... Um, if you look at the logo, the E and the X, you'll actually see an arrow there, which a lot of people don't notice. There's an arrow there between the E and the X. And it means it's in motion. It means that the packages will get delivered. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, Wendy's. Everybody knows about Wendy's and Dave Thomas. Uh, he knew what he was doing about the old-fashioned hamburgers. When you think of old-fashioned hamburgers, those wonderful square hamburgers, you think about homemade hamburgers and of course um i discovered recently underneath wendy uh you'll see the word mom on her collar uh so you know this was done for a reason this was on purpose everyone so when you're thinking about a logo it could be simple or you can be clever like these companies have been with their logo and just some branding tips, you know, just you want to be consistent. I have here the kids method, uh, keep it simple, stupid, focus on growing your presence uh, and what platform you're going to use. And just know that you can't please everyone. There are billions of people out there. Um, make sure you have quality with your branding. You want people to get the certain, uh, be certain that they're getting the best value. And customers are bound to like your brand because of that. So part two of this um, presentation is mobile-friendly website. 
So you have here, um, this is some reasons to have a mobile friendly website. They low fast, sort of better for search engines. Um, users love mobile websites and you want it easy for them uh, to come up with your website when they're looking at it online. And this is an interesting fact that more than 50% of all internet users come from mobile, which uh, I just discovered that recently. There's some simple tips to have a mobile friendly website. You know, offer a responsive site. Don't try to create a brand new second one. Um, use high resolution pics. I know the standard has been not using resolution, high resolution pics, but nowadays people are asking you to use it because especially if you're selling items, you want the visual, you want it to be visual. You want the images to stand out. Um, and if you do want to add a video, the uh, best tip I can give for that is add them on YouTube. Let YouTube host them and then embed them and it loads quicker. So you don't want to embed or load your video right onto your site. No, that's going to slow it down. Lead capture and funnel pages. Now, this over here uh, is something that a lot of businesses struggle with digitally. Um, you need to have the right sales funnel. Uh, and if, if configured with proper way, can automate your marketing and help you scale your income on autopilot. And that's directly from an entrepreneur. If you're not familiar with uh, funnels, basically you have the top of the funnel have leads. Uh, they turn into prospects and then customers. So, you know, it's not um, every lead you get turns into customers. It has to kind of funnel its way down. And the single purpose of a funnel is to gain attention to customers and attain more leads. So when you have leads, they will become customers. So in order to get customers, obviously you need leads. So this is something that you can do uh, for a lead capture page. You can give something away. You can give something of value. Uh, this is to get their names and emails. For instance, realtors can offer a home valuation lead page. Uh, consultants can offer a time session. Authors can give away a sample of their writing. Service industries can also offer a discount. So, yeah, basically look at your business. What can you do? If you're a designer, you can offer some free tips. You can offer maybe a cheat sheet about uh, stylish things that you could do to your homes or home tips. Uh, if you're a service industry, you can decide, you know, what are people struggling with and offer them some sort of solution, uh, something to get their names and emails so they will eventually become a customer. So using a CRM, this is what you do when you get leads. Uh, a lot of people get leads and are not sure what to use with their names and email addresses that they receive. So basically what I'm saying is, you know, you need something to put on it. You need a pool. You can't just have a list. Now, a lot of people I know use Microsoft Excel, which is great because you can create uh, columns and rows with information. Uh, like when you access that lead, uh, you can add notes of whether they're a hot lead or warm lead whether they will go anywhere, put their, you know, more information other than just their names. However, there are so many tools out there like Contactually, Salesforce, and Nimble. Uh, the tool that I use is Nimble because uh, it has some social aspect. It keeps track of uh, the lead social accounts. It looks them up and lets you know about their LinkedIn page or Facebook page or Twitter page. So it keeps you connected to them socially, not just their name and email. So this is part four, uh, building a successful email campaign. So to build a successful email campaign, um, you must uh, get permission of people to use their email, uh, get emails from the lead capture pages and funnels and business cards, networking events online or everywhere, uh, share important updates, uh, dates, community news, events, or share newsletter. But you need to create quality content or curate the content. So to build an email, successful email campaign, for instance, on the left-hand side, you'll see, this is from 
this is a template a lawyer can use this. And you're thinking a lawyer for newsletter? Yes, lawyers can have newsletters too. So it, basically it looks like um, a web page when someone opens their email and it shows a little bit about the lawyer and solutions to a problem. On uh, the top right, you'll see a basic email of someone sending out information about their business. Uh, it could be periodically, it's a campaign. And then on the bottom right, it's an actual event. You know, these are just ideas that you could do for your email campaign. No matter what business it is, you can do a newsletter and keep it, or keep in contact with your existing leads, which will then become clients. So part five, we have SEO. Uh, this is, SEO is something I've been doing for many, many years. And why do you need SEO? The better question is why not? Because SEO is so important and it's crucial for your business. Uh, SEO is more than just your website. It's, you know, it takes apart everything you know digitally and makes you be seen, you know, on all the search engines. Um, it offers free traffic. Uh, you know, if you just optimize your website, and just follow along, you know, the white hat rules, uh, you will be seen. But with these little tips, you can do so much more. There's two types of SEO. Uh, there's on-page and off-page SEO. Each one of them focuses on specific features and ideas. Let's talk about them. So on-page SEO is you, know, you need to do some keyword research. Uh, there's content SEO, like um, the keyword density, uh, header tags, header one, header two, and then the body, how many times you add your keyword to all this. There's some image alt tags, uh, naming each image uh, by keyword. Uh, so that's definitely important. Then you have the meta keywords like title and description, which are very important. Website speed also counts at SEO now. Uh, and it's just a reminder, don't overstuff with keywords. So um, just look up what is the dense, correct density for uh, keywords. You'll discover it's one to 3% per body or maybe up to 5%. I don't remember right now, but uh, if you look it up, it's pretty, pretty easy. Uh, there's certain density for description as well. And a lot of people say that density doesn't matter, but I still believe in that. Uh, it's better to be safe than sorry because you don't want to overstuff your with keywords. So off-page SEO uh, is stuff that you can do to for your business, for your website, that doesn't include on-page SEO. So off-page SEO is all about the elements influenced by visitors, readers, and publishers. So if you create content that would last and maybe shared um that is great seo uh if you get links from authority sites not spammy ones that is also incredible seo and pr and buzz is good if you can get as much pr as possible that is incredible uh that will help your page because uh the more pr the more links that are out there the more uh buzz about your site the better your ranking will be and of course, build trust. And a little known fact is that Google will actually see uh, your keyword. And even if it, it's not a link, it will see your business name. And that actually counts um, towards good PR and buzz. So it doesn't have to be a link anymore. Just the text itself uh, will work. So part six is social media for business. This is um, a wide section that we could cover, but I'm just going to delve into some simple basics about social media because, I mean, we could have an entire discussion about this on its own. So basically, when people tell me about social media, what social media to use, I always tell them, uh, use what you use or use what not Use what your clients use, actually. That, that would be a better um, answer to that, is where are your clients? Where is your ideal client? 
If your clients are on LinkedIn and it's business to business, then by all means use that channel. If you find that your clients are on Snapchat or Instagram, then that's where you need to be. Use where your clients are, where your customers are. Uh, there's a lot of social media channels out there. Uh, there's only like top six or seven. Uh, so brand yourself to where your clients are. This is just, again, a reminder, pick a few platforms and stick to them. Know your target audience. This will determine which platform you use. Um, Pinterest, you know, women use mostly Pinterest, and it's very, very visual. Um, you have Snapchat, YouTube, LinkedIn. So, you know, you can do your own research on uh, these social media channels and f discover uh, what are good demographics. So again, pick three platforms and stick to them. Consistency is key. Make sure that when you're posting items that you're offering meaningful comment and share some stories, uh, but nothing political. It's when I did this presentation in front of an audience for our digital marketing group, uh, I didn't have that. And someone suggested that I should put on here don't post anything political and so i actually add had to add that because i think it's very smart i i don't post anything political but i do think it's an important tip to add here so step outside yourself or keep your political uh ideas or slants etc uh to yourself when you're posting on social media yeah, if you have personal facebook accounts etc that is fine but you know, not on your business account. Your business account should be like Switzerland. Um, always reply to comments. Be transparent. And remember the 80-20 rule. Um, you know, 80% is posting all about other things, you know, responding to them and information that they mean. And 20% is about selling. So it's not all about sell. And be genuine. Um, you really have conversations with people and connect with them. Uh, this is a major thing uh, is connecting with your audience. So know what they like, know what they dislike. If someone's having a baby, you know, ask how they're doing, how far along, um, you know, talk about birthdays. Uh, LinkedIn has this great tool. It notifies you when someone's celebrating a birthday, when someone has a an an work anniversary. Uh, this is an incredible way to reaching out for, to people and the messages are effortless. So, you know, be human, put the human back in social. So we have here part seven is video marketing. Um, I love video marketing. Uh, it's something I have a passion about. Uh, it's really big for social media, for digital marketing right now. And this will tell you why. This is a recent uh, quote in Forbes. And I can tell you it is the future of content marketing. And this will give you a little idea of how people consume videos, hours and hours of them. And an incredible fact is that 64% of customers are most likely to buy a product online after watching a video. So if you're selling something, so think about that. And 87% of online marketers are currently using video content in their digital marketing strategies. So if you are a digital marketer and you're not using um, video, you're the 13% that are not. Uh, and, you know, this is an incredible figure here by next year. Um, this projects to claim more than 80% of all uh, web traffic. It does not have to be done by a professional, although I would suggest a professional. This, this video I'm creating here is definitely not done by a professional, but... Uh, the most important thing is to get out there and do it. So if you're trying to do a professional video and you want to do a professional video, then by all means, hire a professional. I have videographers that are great, uh, and I've worked with them with myself and for clients. But uh, know when to use them and know when you could just do it yourself. So make sure your website is has a video on a page. 
um, you know, what is your video about? Make sure you have goals. Is it just to achieve traffic? Is it to get more um, exposure? Make sure you syndicate your video. Don't just post on YouTube and leave it there. Syndicate it. Uh, syndicate it, basically what that means, make sure you share it to all your social channels. Uh, videos can also be used in your email marketing as well. And think about paying for them, like YouTube, Facebook, and Google AdWords. YouTube is very, very affordable for uh, for videos. You can have a budget that's two, bu two bucks a day, a dollar a day, five, bu five dollars a day will get you thousands of uh, views so really really consider youtube uh that's uh that's a great way to increase views if you're wondering so uh this part right here uh we're going towards the end is paid ads um paid ads are a form of digital marketing i think about it as a necessary evil um when i first started digital marketing years ago i thought as much as you could do free the better However, my thoughts have changed since then because um, there's a lot of competition out there and you can mix your SEO with a little paid advertising. Uh, so, you know, that's exposure without a fortune. That's basically what I'm trying to tell you here. Um, if you're paying someone to help with publicity or SEO, you're still paying, so you might as well pay for some digital ads. Well, consider with a pay campaign, um, your goals, your, you know, is it to get leads, to build your subscribers and YouTube channel, or, or just exposure. Um, message, what are you offering? Is, is your, are you offering an, um, an incentive, a special coupon, a lead magnet? What platform are you going to use? Uh, it's not just social media. You can actually do some banner ads. Uh, you can actually be a sponsor in someone's email campaign, um, blog ads, uh, and also think about their frequency and time of campaign. And we have part nine here. This is the last of the series is press and news releases. Make your business headline news. Uh, this is my um, slogan that I have for Finger Lakes Copywriting when I first started this business is uh, I started helping local businesses with press releases. And I wrote really crafty uh, news releases and uh, with great headlines and used a distribution network and connected with a lot of people in PR. Um, and this was a successful business for years until people uh, started requesting me to do more than just news releases, such as websites and campaigns and social media, et cetera. So, but I initially started my business with just news, uh, helping businesses with press releases. And this is why I put this here because I still think it can be a great way to share information and milestones about your company. Um, news releases actually help with SEO. They're incredible with that. Um, I suggest to build your media kit section. Uh, so a page on your website where you have all your news releases uh, and somewhere where journalists can go to find out more about your company. So think of it as it's about us page, but all about your company that a journalist can look at and grab information from. Uh, if you don't know how to write a news release, have someone else write it. Use a reputable distribution. Uh, some of the distribution companies that use is like PR.com. They're one of the oldest online distribution companies. They're still awesome. There's some free ones out there as well. Uh, and think about it. Is your press release going to be an online web release or does it include distribution to media contacts? Uh, some of it will have both. You can just get an online web release but journalists won't see it, but you will get some legs with it in the online digital world. Or you could do both where you can actually send it to journalists as well. So think about um, what kind of news release. And if it's both, that's that's great. So this is the bonus part of, of this video here. I'm going to talk a little bit about Builderall. Builderall has changed the way I do digital marketing because I've been a huge um, WordPress fan. I 
praised WordPress for over 10 years and used it religiously. However, I've had some issues with it, um, with the plugins and uh, things not getting along, plugins not getting along with the actual program and with spam, etc. So, and plus, I can never find the right theme for the right client. I always have to make do with things. Uh, so this is a new company that's really taken off um, and thousands and thousands of digital marketers are using, their, using this company because it has so many tools for your business. Um, you know, entrepreneurs are using it. Uh, you can create uh, sales funnels with this tool. Um, digital marketers are using it, agencies, sm all small businesses. Uh, it has themes and funnels ready to go as soon as you join, which is incredible. Uh, they're really easy to update. Uh, all the sites can be mobile friendly as well. Uh, so this is something that you really need to look into if you're serious about digital marketing. It has all the tools you need in one dashboard. It has a drag and drop builder, uh, an email platform, marketing platform within it. <coughs> Excuse me. So instead of using MailChimp, you know, it has it within it. It's called Mail Boss, a responsive website builder, and anim animated videos creator, including more. They just announced a webinar tool. So within this platform, you have a webinar post. You can actually create webinars. So it's everything you need for your business. I really, truly recommend uh, giving it a shot. If you want to take a look at it, go to digitalmarketingba.online. Uh, that's digitalmarketingba.online to take a look at that. And if you want your free copy of the book, uh, Digital Market Essentials, this is what we covered in this presentation, but this is more in depth of everything we covered. Uh, it's a whole book. You can grab your free copy at digitalmarketingessentials.online. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm Don Stevens. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.